In history, for the first time, a spacecraft dared to enter the atmosphere of the Sun. The achievement of the Parker Solar Probe will always be remembered in history, because neither any metal nor the toughest rock on Earth can withstand such extreme heat. So, the question arises, why doesn't the Parker Solar Probe melt in such high temperatures? Not just thousands, but even in temperatures of millions of degrees, it functions perfectly. Once again, in the videos of the Universe Tour, during research on the Sun's surface in the early 1900s, scientists noticed a peculiar phenomenon. They were estimating the temperature of the Sun's surface by analyzing the wavelengths and colors of light emitted from it. This task was being performed using a spectroscope from Earth. It's important to note that the color and wavelength of light have a direct connection to its temperature. This discovery left scientists puzzled and led to a mystery that has yet to be fully understood. During this research, they found that the temperature of the sun's surface, which is around 5,500 degrees Celsius, is remarkably lower compared to the temperature of its outermost atmospheric layer called the corona, which is astonishingly more than 5 million degrees Celsius. This phenomenon is similar to feeling hotter when moving away from a fire. This mystery remained hidden within the sun's light and could only be observed during a solar eclipse or using chronographic sunshades. After NASA's establishment in 1958, the era of space exploration began with various satellites and spacecraft being launched into space one after another. However, understanding this unique phenomenon of the sun required a probe that could venture into the sun's corona and study the processes taking place there. The probe had to withstand temperatures of millions of degrees Celsius and observe the solar wind escaping the sun. Designing and developing the Parker Solar Probe was a challenge in itself, but sending it to the sun posed an even greater challenge. It's important to understand that getting close to the sun, which holds the planets of our solar system in its gravitational bonds, is incredibly difficult. To bring a satellite back to Earth from its orbit, its speed needs to be reduced so that Earth's gravity can pull it back. Similarly, if a satellite needs to be sent to another planet, its speed needs to be increased so that it can escape Earth's orbit. In the case of Mars, for example, a spacecraft is first launched into Earth's orbit using a rocket, and then at the right time, angle, and speed, it is propelled out of Earth's orbit. Extracting a spacecraft from Earth's orbit requires a significant amount of energy. While a rocket can take a spacecraft into Earth's orbit, launching it beyond that requires both a large angle and a massive amount of energy. The distance between Mars and Earth is relatively small compared to the distance between Earth and the Sun. This means that the angle required to launch a spacecraft from Earth to Mars isn't as extreme as the angle required to launch a spacecraft towards the Sun. This angle also requires a tremendous amount of energy. Sending a spacecraft to the sun required even more energy, and a rocket with such power hasn't been developed yet. Therefore, NASA's experts decided to send the Parker Solar Probe to Venus first. Venus, being the second planet in our solar system, could provide the gravitational assist needed to increase the probe's speed. However, there was a catch. Venus is a smaller planet, and thus its gravitational pull is weaker. To achieve the required speed for the Parker Solar Probe to reach the Sun, it had to perform 24 orbits around Venus. Only then will it be able to reach the closest point to the Sun. On August 12, 2018, the Parker Solar Probe was launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. NASA has planned an eight-year timeline for this mission. To reach the closest point to the Sun, Venus's assistance will be taken 24 times. Each orbit lasts for 37 hours, providing an opportunity to research the Sun. In total, over eight years, this probe will conduct 900 hours of research on the Sun. On April 28, 2021, NASA confirmed that the Parker probe had successfully entered the Sun's corona layer in its eighth orbit, the mystery of the corona which has been hotter than the surface of the sun for over a hundred times, has now been verified by the Parker probe. But why is this the case? What force is heating the mysterious corona layer more than the sun's surface? 
Research is ongoing to understand this. Now let's turn to our main question. Why doesn't the Parker Solar Probe melt in such extreme heat? The side of the Parker Probe facing the sun is equipped with a heat shield made from carbon foam. This is not normal foam. It's specially designed by the Ultramat company to absorb the sun's heat. This foam is 97% empty from the inside, making the heat shield even more effective. Additionally, a layer of carbon-carbon composite has been added, made from graphite and resin, enhancing the heat shield's properties. This mixed heat shield has been superheated on both sides, transforming the carbon into a pure form. As we know, carbon has excellent heat conductivity, and the side facing the sun is coated with white ceramic paint to reflect most of the sunlight before it enters. Besides the heat shield, the rest of the Parker Solar Probe is designed in a way that it's always in the shadow of this shield. Even after all these precautions, the Parker Probe can withstand temperatures up to 2500 degrees Celsius. In contrast, the temperature of the corona is around 5 million degrees Celsius. Now, understanding how it can withstand such extreme heat is quite straightforward. According to the laws of thermodynamics, heat transfer requires a medium. Just like in summers, particles and vapors in the air carry heat, which is why we feel warmth even at night. If particles were fewer, heat wouldn't transfer as easily, just like how you can put your hand in a 300-degree oven for a moment without immediate discomfort. This is possible only because water molecules come into contact with us, whereas things in an oven don't. Experts say that the heat shield of the Parker Solar Probe can reach temperatures of 1200 degrees Celsius, while its previous section, where the sun's light doesn't reach, experiences temperatures below zero because there are no particles to transfer heat. This is the reason why the Parker Solar Probe doesn't melt even when it's so close to the sun. I hope you'll also like and share this universe tour video. Thank you for your love-filled comments. See you in the next amazing video.